everybody! So far, we've learned how to build databases from scratch. Today, we'll learn how to present this data and analyze it with the famous Matplot library and pandas. The ability to visualize our data in the form of graphs and charts is a must-have skill in machine learning. Otherwise, how would you know if your model is accurate or not? Or, God forbid, overfitting? And I think we all witnessed our share of really, really inaccurate models lately. All those fancy COVID-19 predictions that got it all wrong. So that's why we are not going to skip any steps. We're going to go through all the concepts, all the modules, the syntax, and yes, even math, so we can fully understand what we are doing. In this video, we're going to find out once and for all, which programming language is the most popular? So with the help of PyTrends, we'll extract data from Google Trends and plot it to a bunch of graphs and charts. So if you guys are ready, you can start a brand new notebook. And again, I'm using Jupyter Notebook this time, but it's only because I want to show you guys how to download your own graphs. And it's a bit easier to do from a local environment. Uh, but feel free to use any other IDE you want. So I know you're probably tired of seeing my Windows 8 again, but I'm in the process of switching to DeX, which is Android's version of Linux. So I'm still figuring out the details, but in the meanwhile, let's open Anaconda. We will activate our environment and install the modules with pip install matplotlib and pip install pytrends. And because I already have them installed, your comments will be different from what you see on my screen. So we'll run Jupyter Notebook, we'll navigate to the desired folder, create a new Python 3 document, and rename it to matplotlib. First, we'll import pytrends from pytrends.request, import trendrec in camel case, and now we can create a pytrends object which will request data from Google Trends. We'll simply type pytrends equals trendrec rec, and inside the round brackets, we'll specify the host language or HL and set it to English US. We will also need a list of search terms or keywords where we specify the names of the programming languages that we want to compare. So let's say we want to focus on Python, R, C++, Java, and you know what? Let's also include HTML for all time's sake. And just so you know, we are actually limited up to five keywords at a time. And the last thing left to do is to command the PyTrans object to search for the keywords and return our data. We'll simply type PyTrans dot build underscore payload and inside the round brackets the first thing we specify is our list of keywords and we'll also need to specify a time frame for our inquiry so let's say time frame equals today five minus y which represents the last five years and this is actually the default value but i want you guys to know how to adjust it so this will collect all the google trends data regarding our keywords, which is actually way too much information. So let's narrow down the amount of data we're getting in return, and we'll type data equals pytrends dot interest over time. And now we can print our data, and we see that we got a very nice data frame in return, and it contains weekly information about the number of searches for each keyword. But now that we actually see the data, we realize it's very hard for us to analyze it because we would have to go over 260 rows and five different keyword columns before we can even start making conclusions. And you know me, I don't like wasting time and doing complicated things if I can avoid them. So let's turn this data into a graph and analyze it like a pro. We'll import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, and the most basic way to plot the data is by typing plt.plotdata and plt.show. 
So right away, we see this colorful graph with a bunch of years on the x-axis and a bunch of numbers along the y-axis. Needless to say that this graph is not very informative. We can't really tell which language is represented by which color, so we'll definitely need a legend to help us figure it out. We can do this with plt.legend. And the first parameter represents the values we want to see in our legend, which would be our list of keywords. And the second parameter is the location of the legend on the graph. So let's say lock equals upper left. The default, by the way, is upper right. And let's rerun the cell. Beautiful. Now we know which color represents each keyword. And we're almost there. We'll just need to add some titles because without the context of this video, we won't be able to understand what this information represents. So we'll define the main title with plt.soup_title, like super title, and we'll set it to programming language searches on Google. And the titles for each axis can be added with plt.xlabel, which will represent the years, and plt.ylabel, which will represent the weekly keyword searches. So let's rerun the cell again. And wow, it looks amazing. And we can also save it to our computer with this super quick trick. We'll simply replace plt.show with plt.savefig, as in save figure. And inside the round brackets, we'll place the name of our image. So let's say data.png. We'll run the cell and we'll quickly check if the image is now in our directory. So as you see, it's here and it's beautiful, but somehow I still feel like it's too much information to analyze. So let's zoom in on Python and compare it to each individual keyword. So we'll define a new list of keywords. We'll call it focus and set it to Python and R. And we'll plot a brand new graph with plt dot plot data but only for our new keywords, which are represented by focus. And we already know we'll need a legend, so we'll do the same thing with plt.legend for our variable focus. And let's have a look. We see that even though R has a much higher number of searches, their graph is actually going downwards, meaning less people are searching for R in 2020 when compared to 2015. Python, on the other hand, keeps climbing and climbing, and we can clearly see the number of searches is much higher than in 2015. But when we compare Python with Java, we see that Java is drastically fading away, and it looks like it's a good time to consider switching to C++. And why? Look at how C++ is consistent on the graph. It's not only leading in terms of searches, but it also has a graph that climbs upwards. It's here to stay. I wish I could say the same thing about HTML, Java, and R, but this data doesn't leave a lot of room for optimism. But this is just my conclusion. What do you guys think? Which one is the winner? Okay, we've learned how to plot line graphs, but what are we going to do when our information is not numeric? What if we want to find out which countries have the most searches of Python? So first we'll pull the data with data2 equals pytrends.interest by region. And inside the round brackets, we'll set our resolution to country in capital case and ask to include even the low volume values with inc low vol equals true. Now, because we only want to focus on Python this time and we only want to get the top ranking countries, we'll set data2 to equal data2 Python, which is the only column we want, and right after, without any spaces, dot n largest. This will return the top five values. Let's actually set it to the top 10 values instead and print our new data2. And we can definitely see that it's not a data frame this time. It looks a bit too naked and undesigned to be one. 
So let's find out which type of data we're dealing with this time. And we see it's a pandas series. Cool. So the easiest way to convert it to a data frame is by typing data2 equals data2 dot to frame. And now when we print the data, we get a beautiful data frame. So let's plot it. This time, however, we'll plot with pandas instead of matplotlib. It's just much easier to do when it comes to bar charts. You can't even compare between the two. So the way to plot with pandas is by typing data2, which is the data frame, dot plot, and inside the round brackets, we'll set kind to bar. And that's all. We can actually run the cell now. And look at that, Pandas even took care of the legend. And from here, you can add your super title and access names using matplotlib just like before. So I'm quickly going to set my title to Python searches per country, my X label to countries, and my Y label to overall average number of searches. And because we've just added these titles, we'll also need to call plt.show to see them integrated in our chart. Perfect. Lastly, what happens if we want to plot a bar chart, including all the keywords and not just Python? We'll simply copy data2 and rename it to data3. And to remind you, this is the data frame divided by countries. And we'll actually slice data three and we'll pick five random countries. So let's say 55 to 60. And we're ready to plot this data. We simply type data three dot plot kind equals bar just like before. And boom, pandas already took care of everything. Look at how well organized this chart is. Did you imagine it would be that easy? And that's pretty much it. But today, I actually have an assignment for you guys. I want to see how you plot your own data. You can get this data from a CSV file. You can either web scrape it or you can even use the PyTrans techniques. Just maybe change the keywords and dates or whatever. And if you do so, check out the documentations because I just scratched the surface of this library and could do so much more. I would love to see what you guys come up with. Just upload your notebook to your GitHub account and then you can share the link either on YouTube or on Facebook, wherever you're comfortable. And keep in mind that this is not a contest just yet, but if enough people participate, I can definitely see how we can take it further into sponsorships and giveaways and really cool interactive contests. So. If you want to see this in the future, definitely participate. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week.